Today I just thought we'd take a quick look at this advanced motion controls uh, servo amplifier. This little servo drive is a 30A8T and I actually have three of these and I've had these for quite a while as, as well as these uh, CMC uh, permanent magnet servo motors. The old uh, tack was taken off of this motor. It still has the spring clip there if you wanted to slide on a hollow shaft, maybe encoder or in this application it had to be a tack, but the old tack is gone. Kept this motor off of an old CMC Bernie table. I actually upgraded with new uh, AC servos about 10 years ago. And since I don't have a tachometer, I've got the dip switches set for this voltage mode. That way we'll have a voltage feedback from the from the actual motor itself. We used to call it armature feedback, but it's just without having a closed loop. So this will be running in an open loop mode. We'll see how good it controls. And the reason I planned on using this in open loop is because I was going to have an encoder, an actual hollow shaft or through shaft encoder mounted. And that encoder was going to feed back to a controller real similar to this um, Vital Systems Ethernet motion control board. So I was going to control the plus and minus 10 out and the encoder was going to be my closed loop feedback um, back to the, the motion controller. So we don't have to worry about, um, I do have enough wires here for the tack if I wanted to use it, but we don't have to worry about that right now. I'm just going to lay them aside. The specs on this is 30 amps peak current, 15 amps continuous, and 20 to 80 volts DC in. So the cool thing about this little drive is very compact. There's two different ways you can mount it. Uh, typically they're mounted like this because you can get so many of them um, in a row. Very modular. So all we got to have is a DC source. Depending on our motor, we can put anywhere from 20 to 80 volts DC in. I have a connector and I bought the pins and I've done a few um, wires coming off so we can actually hook this up and it just mates with the connector on the front for our IO. So now we have a, a motor was already hooked up. I can bring over a, a DC supply. At this time I'm just going to use my 5 amp power supply because we're not going to have much load here. But I could actually bring over a battery, um, anything from a M18 Milwaukee to actually, um, if most of you know or watch my videos, you know I like to use the Ego 56 volt for a lot of things. And yep, we could even run this off the Ego 56 volt battery if we so chose. So here's our block diagram, which we'll get into a little bit later. Some of the specs. You can pause that if you would like. It's the P1 signal connector, so it's here. This is what our IO pins are. We will go into them a little bit deeper. One thing I definitely want to point out is the um, AMC did a really good job with, this, with their drive manual because on this page 7, if you buy a drive like this, typically you're not going to have the connector. And if you have the connector, you probably don't have your um, insert terminals. So I actually saved these numbers from about six years ago when I bought them. So if you're curious, there's the, um, the DigiKey numbers that I ordered. But if you look real close here, it matches up exactly what's in the book. Molex part number for the inserts as well as the connector. And that's your Molex connector number, and that's my connector. The insert terminals, and that's the insert terminals that I bought. So I did have to look those up and do some digging. And after I found this and printed it out, it's printed right there in the details. So kudos for the engineer who put that together. Dimensions and part number bill. So we'll set this aside for now. So just how quick and get this motor up and run with this drive. So the first thing I want to look at is our pin one is our plus 10 and we have a five milliamp output li limit on that. There's our signal ground. We also have a negative 10 or a minus 10. So we're going to have 20 volts across one and three. 
And then we get down to our reference plus and our reference minus. We could go down and talk about the tack if we had a tack on here. But the mode we're going to run this in is just voltage mode. Just make sure I got a good connection here. Our, our green LED is on if you can see that. So it lets us know that we're okay and we have power. If we take our reference in positive and signal negative, and just that simple with 1.5 volts, we do get a clockwise, a clockwise movement facing. We do see we got a little bit of offset. The first thing I should have done was just ground out those pins and adjust my offset until we get no movement with no voltage applied. So just that quick we got movement, but now I want to try to bring over a potentiometer. And I'm going to choose a 100K one turn potentiometer because it's going to be quick acting. Put a little, well, put a big knob on here. We want as high a potentiometer as we can, uh, we can get, or at least we want one above 5K, so. So we'll let the um, we'll let this white lead or our wiper go to our reference in, and we could actually do reference plus or minus since it's going through a comparator. We can make it do forward or reverse to swap it up. We're going to take the other two leads across our potentiometer, clockwise and counterclockwise, and we're going to go to the plus 10. But we want to hook the clockwise and the counterclockwise up to our minus and our plus, respectively. So that's the blue and the white here, the terminal 1 and terminal 3. And that's got our 20 volts across the potentiometer. And now we can hook the wiper up from the pot, which I have somewhere close to center, up to the signal end. And we get just a little bit of rotation because it's, I didn't have it perfectly centered, but there we go. So now, to represent our plus and minus 10 from like a CNC control, we can go full clockwise, down, full counterclockwise. And you could actually use this for, for various applications. What I was going to use it for was a CNC machine doing a router engraver table that I chose to use stepper killers on instead, but it just took up less room of a, a control panel than doing this because it's all built into the motor. Newer technology, but this is actually a very tried and true method of doing the servo control. If we wanted for some reason to um, to make the, the motor act opposite direction, for example here I did it on purpose. When I turn this clockwise, this motor turns counterclockwise with the face and the C face. And when I turn it counterclockwise, it goes clockwise. But if I change up and take my negative or minus reference in, instead of the plus reference in, it's almost identical to just hitting the reverse button very good position control to be an open loop very smooth uh, AMC does a good job with these small motor controllers several other things here we could do with P1 the simplest we did the simplest application we can do which is just a plus and minus volts we could use our reference in plus and minus through a relay if we wanted to for application to make it switch forward and reverse very easily without actually switching the power because it's all it can all be done electronically. We have some inhibiting control we could do because of this was a um, a more industrial application we definitely want to go through some type of e-stop e contactor and safety circuit. But other than that, within a few minutes we get motion control. So just a quick video today on motion control because I have these three servo amplifier and servo motor combos. But if this video was liked and you want to go further, 
we can go even further to show um, how I used to upgrade some older CNC equipment using a, a controller similar to this Vital Systems Ethernet uh, uh, DSP motion control and just show them with some feedback using something like a laptop. You can use any PC really as long as you got some type of software. I always use Mach 3. I know Mach 4 is available now but I actually hadn't personally dealt with it because I hadn't upgraded CNC's in quite some time. So if you like this video today please like, share and subscribe and if you would like to go any further with motion control please comment below. Thanks for watching.